is International Fight Week, and for the first time ever this year, Power Slap has been added to the agenda here in Las Vegas. And once again, we are at the home of Power Slap, the UFC Apex. A title is on the line. Light heavyweight champ AJ Hintz defending his belt against Wolverine in the main event. The former heavyweight champ has moved down a weight class and is ready for war. Power Slap 3, Hints vs. Wolverine is presented by Monster Energy. Unleash the Beast, and this is where it's all going down. Welcome inside the UFC Apex for the third Power Slap event of the year, and now part of a loaded slate of events for the UFC on the biggest fight weekend of the year. And as always, it is my pleasure to be joined by UFC Hall of Famer Michael Bisping, the Prelims and the main card have arrived for Power Slab 3. This is where things get really interesting, my oh, friend. Oh, listen, I cannot wait. We saw some sensational finishes on the early prelims, but we always get that. Power Slap is action guaranteed, knockouts guaranteed, and tonight will be no different. I cannot wait. Eight fights on the card, four on the prelims, four on the main card. Speaking of the main card, let's take a peek right now, shall we? It's Dorian Perez and Dwayne Crespo, number one and two at heavyweight. Alan Klingbeil and Austin Turpin. Klingbeil potentially one win away from a title shot. And then the big fellas going at it, the crazy Hawaiian and Micah Sayuli, former high school football teammates. And then it's the light heavyweight title in the main event, AJ Hintz and Wolverine. A special consideration for the main card fighters tonight, Kudo Popcorn, will be signing each winner as an official brand ambassador for a year. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. The light heavyweight champ is AJ Hintz. Loves to talk smack, yes. as you know, but a tremendous amount of respect for Wolverine, his opponent tonight, who he calls the best slap fighter on the planet. Well, Ron Bater, the Wolverine. Listen, he is a legend in his own right. Of course, Power Slap 1 knocked out the legendary Darius the Destroyer. However, Power Slap 2 went up against the bell. What happened? He lost the belt, and now he's come down to light heavyweight because he was too small as a heavyweight. This is his natural weight class, and now he's going up for the belt against AJ Hintz, the man with the strongest neck strength, the strongest neck resistance. The man can pack a slap, he can knock people out, and I cannot wait for him. I can't wait either, my friend. Let's take a look at the light heavyweight rankings. AJ Hintz, of course, the champion. You have Reen there as the number one contender. Alan Klingbaugh, we'll be seeing him tonight as number two. Donovan Cross, Russell Rivero, and Vern Cathy round out your top five. Welterweights in the featured prelims, and it's two of the younger fighters that we have here, Emmanuel Muniz and Cole Young. Muniz from California. Cole Young doesn't have as much experience as Muniz, but both of these guys can get down. Well, Emmanuel Muniz, funnily enough, one of the youngest on the show, but also one of the most experienced, as you say. A very hard hit. So last time out got the victory. Didn't get the knockout, but he did drop his opponent, Christopher Debo, two out of three slaps. So as I say, packs a hard slap. Now, his opponent, Cole Young, uh, um, spurs and first taxi women. Yes, That's his go. business. He's an avid hunter, but more importantly, He's here fighting for a reason. We've talked about it in the past, but let me remind you. His son has a very rare condition. It's a crippling disease, and sadly, it is terminal. This event, Power Slap, allows him to spend more time at home so he can take care of him and give him the love and attention that he deserves and requires. So he's definitely fighting for a cause. This is going to be an interesting one. Son just got out of the hospital after five days there. Very much doing this for him. Three other fights on the prelims. Russell Rivero taking on Bear Bennett. Light heavyweights kicking off the thing tonight, and I cannot wait to get it going. Andrew Fields taking on Jewel Scott. Scott, one of the OGs of Power Slap. And then it's El Perro, Aziel Rodriguez against Amir Duradine, the sixth Power Slap appearance for Rodriguez. For more now in our co-main event, let's bring in the third member of our broadcast team, Charlie Arnold. Hello, Dania. Thank you so much. There are several fighters here tonight who share a bit of history one way or another, but none 
quite like two super heavyweights that we're going to see in action in the co-main event. Listen to this, to Crazy Hawaiian and Micah Suleili, they went to elementary school together. I'm talking ate lunch, played at recess together type of friends, and now it is no coincidence that they are both here in Power Slap at the exact same time. It started three years ago in 2020, the Crazy Hawaiian, he was getting his slap fighting career off the ground and decided to recruit some of the guys he knew to join the circuit, and obviously, he got to thinking about his good friend, Micah. So now, fast forward three years, these two gentlemen at very different points in their career, to Crazy Hawaiian boasting a 13 and one pro record, while Micah still very much in the infancy stage of his, having only a two and O record. So while the resumes look very different, they are here for the exact same reason tonight. They say they are both super gracious for this opportunity and want to make the most of it. And really, Micah is the one who said it best. He says, when they hit the power slap stage, they put their past behind them because sometimes even brothers fight too. Dan, back to you. Charlie, thank you very much. The rules of Power Slap brought to you by Rumble, bold and free. Download the Rumble app or visit rumble.com for the striker. They must use a flat, open hand to the cheek or a gloving foul will be called. Feet have to be grounded. No pivoting or stepping. You must declare a hand and a number prior to the slap. For the defender, there's no chin tucking or flinching. Flinching is massive, it's a point deduction, and the striker goes, the, goes again. The defender does receive 60 seconds to recover after each strike. Three fouls get you DQ'd. The defender does get two minutes to recover after they've been fouled. Power Slap is using instant replay, and if there isn't a finish, we will go to the judges' scorecards. Here's a look at the stats through almost 85 Power Slap matches. The winners of the coin toss have gone on to win 53% of the time, so it's far from automatic, and 19% of the matches have ended in a first round knockout by the coin toss winner. But that coin toss does have a huge impact on the odds. Where you see the value is up to you. Almost set for our first fight of the night. Power slap veteran Russell Rivero, who brings some of the biggest power in the game, wins the toss and will slap first against Bear Bennett. The Milwaukee MMA gym owner is making his power slap debut. And this is where it will all go down. The power slap table rising out of our power slap stage for the first time tonight. Rivero coming into this one is a minus 400 favorite over Bear Bennett. After coming perilously close to winning the Power Slap light heavyweight crown the last time out, Russell Rivero is more motivated than ever to stop Bear Bennett and get another title shot. Eager to return to a world title fight as soon as possible, Hawaiian power hitter Russell Rivero had a controversial end to his bout with AJ Hintz in May. But tonight, redemption is there for the taking when he faces Power Slap newcomer Bear Bennett. Well aware what a win over an established contender like Rivero will do for his career, Milwaukee's Bennett is determined to take whatever his opponent dishes out and fire back even harder as he seeks to not only win the bout, but make a statement and let the rest of the light heavyweight division know that the bear has arrived. Coming up next, Russell Kainoa Rivera takes on Bear Bennett. Fighter Walkouts brought to you by 10X Your World, 10X Your Business, 10X Your Income, 10X Your Life. Go to 10X World. This is Bear Bennett, 37 years old from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the current heavyweight champ in the Cage Grappling Championship promotion and an MMA gym owner. Yeah, that's right. He owns a uh, uh, gym in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. As we trains with Eric Red Schaefer, who is, believe it or not, my first opponent in the UFC a long, long time ago. So this guy's kind of embroiled in the MMA world. Great jujitsu. He said breaking people's jaws is what I do. He's also a high school wrestling coach as well. So he's a busy man. And if he wasn't already busy enough, he has six kids with his seventh on the way. So certainly, you know, a lot to fight for, shall we say now. I said, how did you get here? He said, honestly, I have no idea. He went on a podcast. On that podcast, he was talking with Brian Phillips, of course, he's one of the coaches. And he's suggesting you should give this a try. And here he is making his Power Slab debut. By the way, he is uber confident saying that he's going to break Russell's jaw.
Russell Kainoa Rivera is back. He won the toss. He will strike first. This guy thought for about 60 seconds that he won the light heavyweight title when he knocked out A.J. Hintz. Only he had a stepping foul. Fouls have been a huge issue for him, Charlie. Well, it's interesting you should say that, Dan, because when I spoke to him this week, he told me he has only one thing on his mind heading into this contest. Can you guess? Do not foul. Like you just said, it's what cost him the light heavyweight title last time out, so now he's determined not to let that happen again. He did. He jokes that he's been trying to talk league officials into letting him use duct tape or maybe even some super glue on his shoes to prevent those steps. Uh, but he's a full-time electrician. He says the key to his success, just staying true to himself. He does not know any other way. So he does not let the trolls dictate how he lives his life. He said, let them run all their mouths all they want does not matter to me. Listen, let me tell you. This guy doesn't need to cheat to knock people out. He has natural power. You take one look at him, you see the bill. You see some of the slaps that he's delivered, some of the people that he's put to sleep. The man's a badass. Simple as that. The thing is, he does get a little carried away, gets a little emotional, gets... He doesn't control his slaps, you know what I mean? And last time, I mean, he knocked out AJ Hintz, the light heavyweight champion. He could be the champ right now if he's stuck to the rules. You better do that tonight. Russell Rivero, very motivated. And how about our coaches in the corners tonight? John the Machine Davis in the red corner, Damian DeBell in the blue corner, two of our four power slap champs. Both men very well versed in the sport as we take a look now at the tail of the tape. It's our first match of the night. Two men in their 30s, Bear Bennett, seven years older, three inches taller, and a huge five-inch reach advantage for the underdog, making his Power Slap debut a plus 300 dog. We go to Power Slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, the power is on! Welcome to the Power Slap Arena inside the UFC Apex from the Fight Mecca, Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Power Slap 3, Hintz versus Wolverine. This match is three rounds in the Power Slap light heavyweight division. Introducing first, in the blue corner, he stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 204 and one half pounds. Out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Bear Bennett! Go, and in the red corner, he stands five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds, out of Fort Worth, Texas, by way of Eva Beach, Hawaii. Nay. He is the number four ranked light heavyweight contender in the world, Russell Kainoha! Your referee in charge when the action begins, Kerry Hatley. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Russell Rivero. So remember, 20% of power slap matches end in the first round with the first striker. And, and Russell Rivero is Our one of the hardest center, hitters. Please. I think naturally he has some of the biggest power. For Barry Bennett, this is a daunting situation. First time doing this, going up against a guy that Our knocked out the champion the last time, but it was a disqualification. Right hand on three. Yeah. Right hand Russell on Rivero three, was benching over 400 pounds yes. at one point in his life. He's leaned out a little bit. Going to be interesting to see if his focus on not fouling means a lack of power. We'll find out here. Sir. I don't One, think so. Two. Oh! Oh! See, look at that. Go That's it. down. I mean, Bear's down. I want Five. to see the feet. I mean, oh. he, he stayed down. Remember, this is That's going to be it. MMA fighter. That is going to be it. Step. One and done. He's got a, we got a foul over here. Oh, come on. A foul. That's what I'm saying. It's it's almost automatic we got that Russell Rivero Stepping. is gonna foul. He could be one of the more dominant fighters in power slap. That's Watch the feet. Go. Here we go. Bro. Yep. Every time. Pivot. One point. One point red stepping. stepping. One point red stepping. One point red stepping. 
Make sure you keep your feet still, man. He called, okay? I mean, good. fortunately for him, Barrett Bennett is still in it. If Otherwise, he he'd be disqualified right. again. If Bennett couldn't keep going, he would have won by DQ. Well, Bennett doesn't look good, though. He's looking very hazy, still kind of wobbly on the feet. Yeah, yeah. He's talking to the bell right now, the current heavyweight champ. He's swaying back and forth. Doesn't look like it from the camera angle, but from where I'm sitting. The doc's giving him yeah. some time here, basically saying you look a little wobbly. He's got a minute. Looks a little wobbly to me. I ain't no doctor. I've got one eye, but I can see a man wobbling. He can, he can use all this time. He has two minutes to recover. Here's a look. Look at this with the step. Ooh, look at that. Well, we got a slap. The, the jaw. I mean, these super slow mos. It looks like people's faces are made of Play-Doh. It's just wild. You good? Ready? All right. Looks like he's gonna recover. All right, here we go. Contestants. <laughs> Bear Bennett. His All right. first strike in power slap. Remember, he said he was gonna break Russell's jaw. Let's see what kind of power he has. Okay, count in hand. Look at Russell. Three. Looks like right he's just on dying. Three, that's Come on, measure. hit me. He's been here before. One. Oh, he's got to wind up more than that. Two. Oh, he said he's got the special technique. Five. Ah. Oh, oh, clubbing. Five. Clubbing. I got one point clubbing. One point clubbing. One point clubbing. Okay, you got to keep your hand back, man. You club. All right, so both fighters get a foul and get a point deduction. You good? All even. Okay, recovered. Or, or does Rivero win that round? Yeah, well, Rivero. You ready? He uh, had the he had the more impactful slap. Yeah. He sat him Catch down. Him so okay. I think it's hand just a nine count. nine though. I think you're right. My extensive rules right hand on that three. Done. Uh, you, you deep dive into this all the time. You do a great job. That's the that producer just told me. <laughs> One. All right, here we go. Two. Flinching. How flinching. is he still on his feet? Blue flinching. He flinched. Oh no. Two I don't know how he got it. Okay. Two Blue for flinching. So you cause him. I'll be honest, out of everyone I've you seen good? up here, yeah. Russell Rivero is the person I would least like to take a slap off. So okay. it looks like Russell, he's rubbing his arm. Okay. I think he hurt his arm when he did it. Maybe his elbow. I got a flinch. He gets another shot here because Morning. of yeah. the flinching foul. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, you got 30 seconds. he's in pain. I wonder if he's going to switch arms here. Now, we've seen this before. Okay. Keep your, be sure All right, we got 20 seconds. Here we go. Here we go, Blue. He's trying to shake out go. the elbow. Bad. It's either the elbow or the shoulder, but he was grabbing the elbow area. I mean, it's the only Contestant match he has set. tonight. Right? I reckon Light if he lands well, he's got a good chance of putting him One. to sleep. Use the same arm. Two. That's what he's doing. Here we go. That's oh, it. Man. It's all about it's done. One, Fa three, fast asleep. Four, five. Russell He's fast asleep. Barrel. There's no point counting. He can't hear a damn thing. You're right. Okay. I would not want to get hit by no. Russell Rivera. No, he's, he's a sledgehammer. Yeah. No, I had a good. I had, I had a, a good, good hit, too. The pride of Ava Beach, Hawaii, now living in Fort Worth, Texas. Overcame an early foul and gets the KO. Tonight's Monster Knockout brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Oh, I mean, I'm not surprised that he hurt his arm on the second slap. The amount of power that he generates is freaky, to be honest. And look at the lips still like vibrating and blah, 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 blah. Man. Oh, oh and he I missed the, the headbutt of the table. Poor guy, just to add insult to injury. As if it's not bad enough getting knocked out, cold, right TV. There. Boom. Doink. Oh, not a happy time at uh, Monster Lab Gym in Milwaukee right now. What were the catchers doing? What do you mean? <laughs> Catch him. Headbutt of the table. Forrest, you fired. You can't fire a Hall of Famer. A Hall of Famer can't fire a Hall <laughs> no, of Famer. That's, that, that's a Hall of Fame on Hall of Fame crime. He'll, he'll fire me. 
Ah, smiling Russell Rivero as we send it to Justin Bernard. I'll tell you what, Bernard Bennett is still Ladies and down. gentlemen, referee Kerry Hatley calls a stop to the match in round number two, declaring the winner by knockout, Russell Kainoa Rivero. What's up? Oh. Russell Rivero, you are one scary man. How did that feel? Oh, I felt good for being back on top of my, foot, my, my feet. I promise I do my best for you guys. It's just a top heavy, so when I come with everything, my feet come up automatic, and I'm like, whoa, my son. My bad, bro. Well, I know you've got to be feeling good, but how's that elbow? It looked like you might have tweaked it a little bit. Oh, yeah, fuck it. That's not a big, hot head, that guy right there. I give him props, but, you know, brother, he's solid. He was cool, respectful guy, you know, but we, we come out here, we all try to make money for our families, and support ourselves and we like make big name, man. So shout out to brother Bear, you a solid guy. You know, no hard feelings, whatever. Well, that was a clean, hard hit that led to that KO. Let's take a look at the finish and you can walk me through it. Boom, bingo. Fuck up. Come on, line them up. When I put my hand like this, fuck, I'm kind of square myself. I came back. Boom, I remember Koa told me in the back, I on how I looked at Chin. Two, the third one, I launch on my senior's chin right there. Bing! Oh, there we go. Bada bing. Uh, now, what's next for you, Russell? I mean, you got the knockout, you got the win. This is putting you in the right direction. What do you want to be next? Next, I like take home the belt and all that money. But, you know, uh, to brother Ron, brother AJ, good luck out there, you know. I'll do you guys' thing. And I run into you guys eventually, but uh, go out there, stay safe, and make that money, baby. Yes, sir. Well, congratulations, your winner by knockout, ladies and gentlemen, Russell Rivero. Nice to see Russell Rivero get the win despite the early foul overcoming the odds. Listen, he's been DQ'd twice before and seemed to be on his way until he gets a vicious, vicious knockout. Here. Yeah, he's really got to handle that because this man has so much potential. I think he's one of the most entertaining. I think he's one of the most powerful. I mean, there's just, he's a scary man with freakish power. If he can get that taken care of, I see a championship in his future very soon. You almost hit me every time you do that. I'm sorry, I'll be careful. Thank you. Thank I'm doing you. it on purpose. This is the money maker right <laughs> here. I mean, come on. You're not making much money there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the first match of Power Slap 3 is in the books. If you are watching us anywhere besides Rumble, now is the time to switch over to Rumble.com. Only one fight down. We still have seven to go. Now, you have to see this entire event. The energy, the excitement off the charts in this building. To watch Power Slap 3 live and free, download or just open the Rumble app now. You can go to rumble.com as well. Rumble's the home of Power Slap and the only place to watch the rest of the card. So I'm going to say this again. It's like YouTube. If you are watching anywhere else, you got to go to Rumble now if you want to see the rest. And if that first match is any indication, we are in for some fireworks. We'll come to you live from the fight capital of the world. And starting right now, Rumble's the only place you can watch the rest of the card. Get there now if you're watching on another platform. Up next, a pair of top 10 welterweights. New Orleans native Jewel Scott is a combat sports veteran who brings a 2-2 two two record to the power slap table and is eager to climb the ranks and get one step closer to a title shot. His opponent, 
Andrew Fields coming off a first round knockout on Power Slap 2. Armed with the confidence of that first W, the welder from South Carolina says he's more dangerous than ever after continuing to hone his technique. Here is Andrew Fields. He's been toughening up his hands. He works as a welder. He's been hitting back to sand. He's been hitting anything he can find to firmen up those parts of the slaps. Oh, no, no. Good. One and done. He ain't getting up. And that's why we love Power Slap. I mean, come on. Perfect knockout for Andrew Fields. Ooh. Take a look at the weight classes we have in Power Slap. There are six of them. Lightweight, 155 pounds. Welterweight, 170. Middleweight, 185. Then light heavyweight at 205. Heavyweight at 265. And unlike the UFC, we have super heavyweights at 265 and over. There are a couple of 400 pounders on the card tonight. And if you want to get in on the action, you can. Power Slap continues to look for the best fighters in the world including for cast members on the next season of Power Slap Road to the Title. Slap Fighters can apply at powerslap.com slash casting. Our second fight of the night is at welterweight, where Andrew Fields gets the first slap after winning the coin toss, going up against one of the sport's OGs. Season competitor Jewel Scott may not be the younger man in this matchup with Andrew Fields tonight, but he plans on showing Fields that on the power slap stage, there is no substitute for experience. Making his move to the welterweight division, New Orleans veteran Jewel Scott has a championship on his mind in his new weight class. But to get that quest off to a positive start, he must put a stop to Andrew Fields' hot streak tonight. At just 23 years old, South Carolina Fields is one of the young guns of Power Slap, and he was firing on all cylinders when he stopped James Santa Maria in May. But Scott will be his toughest test to date as Kid Diamond returns to Las Vegas with a pair of knockout wins over Anthony Green and Andrew Provost under his belt. Coming up next, Andrew Casper Fields faces Jewel Kid Diamond Scott. Kid Diamond, Jewel Scott in the house, 38 years young from New Orleans, Louisiana. One of the OGs for season one of Power Slap Road to the title. He started 2-0, but he has lost back-to-back -back fights. So the 38-year-old from New Orleans feels like he has something to prove here tonight. Yeah, but listen, so far, it's not doing too bad. Two and two, this will be the fifth time appearing here. 37 hours a week, he says that he trains for this, puts a lot of time into it. 10 professional mixed martial arts fights. He's fought a little bit of bare knuckle as well. A very experienced kickboxer, boxing, you name it. Combat sports, power slapping, whatever it is, this man does it, he loves it, and he's had some decent success. However, you're absolutely right, he's lost the last two. So I'm intrigued to see what kind of differences he's making towards his technique and how he delivers them, what training he's been doing, has he been strengthening the neck, increasing the power, working resistance bands, lifting weights. I guess we're going to find out. We are. Well, everybody on TikTok already knows about him. You can see the stat here, 245 million views of his knockout of Anthony Green. It's one of the most viewed pieces of sports footage on TikTok of the year. 245 million. Yeah. That's insane. It's nuts. It's nuts. It just shows you the popularity of this sport, and it is still growing. Jules Scott anxious to get back to the power slap table. This is the favorite here tonight, a minus 180 favorite, Andrew Casper Fields. He's a youngin', 23 years old from Piedmont, South Carolina, coming off that first knockout, first round knockout against St. James Santa Maria in May. The welder from South Carolina has really focused on how he's receiving slaps, right? It's a different deal for him now. 
That's right. Listen, first of all, last time against James Santa Maria, that was just a brutal knockout. We saw a little bit of the highlight before. The man clearly has ridiculous power. Now, to your point, which you just mentioned, I found this very interesting because we see the, the contestants, they hold the batter behind them. They squeeze that. They tense up their neck. They tense up their shoulders. And they try and resist the slap as much as possible. He said his theory, and it kind of makes sense, is that that's all wrong. You should just relax, be floppy. So when you get slapped, you don't flint, you don't do it on purpose, you just let your head go with the flow, as opposed to resisting it, which is like meeting it head on. Exactly. He says there's a fine line, though. You don't want your head to be an egg on a pencil as we take a look now at the tail of the tape. Jewel Scott, 38 years old. He's at a four-inch height advantage, but he has a three-inch reach advantage. Interesting numbers here for the OG and the underdog in this matchup. Andrew Fields looking to make it two in a row. Jewel Scott looking to get his first win in his last three tries. With that, we send it to Power Slap announcer Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the Power Slap welterweight division. Introducing to you first, in the blue corner, he stands five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in at 169 pounds. Out of New Orleans, Louisiana, Ow. Jewel Kid Diamond Sky. Let's go! And in the red corner, he stands six feet, one inches tall, weighing in at 171 pounds. Out of Piedmont, South Carolina, Andrew Casper. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Chris Tyone. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Andrew Fields. Come on, boys. All right, man. Have your waist touching them. Andrew go Fields right going to get the first yeah, crack here, right and he him. is the oh, favorite. Sorry, there you go. Okay. Once the coin toss happens, who that does affect the odds. Well, you can clearly see a height okay. discrepancy. Right on two. Okay, we've got right on two. You must measure. Okay, I'll count for you. Okay, here we go. Dual Scott already tensed up, has the lips That's puckered. Measure. So that longer arm, one. the longer reach gives you more leverage. Decent slap. A few steps back. Carry. But Dual Scott is fine. He's Bow. just fine. Knocked back foul. a little bit, has a stepping. smile on his face. They call a stepping foul on Fields. Oh. One point, red, stepping. These people have One got to get it together. Stepping. One they're, point, they're not red, paying stepping. attention to the rules. They're focusing so okay. much on Thank generating you. as much power as possible. They're letting that dominate everything. They're forgetting about you the rule set. Yes, okay, I'm gonna get him set. I agree okay. with you, but I also agree when you're up there and in the moment, maybe a little easier said than done. Oh, oh, without question, Dan. Without question. Stay right there, okay? Perfect position. Okay, hand and count. Three, right. Right on so three, you must measure. Right on three. Fields is taller, That's but Scott measure. has the longer reach here, which is interesting. Much longer. That is interesting. One. Two. <laughs> Flinch! Takes it. Oh, a flinch. Oh, no. Flinch. I mean, that was close. He's going to have to take another one. Oh, okay. baby. There is no worse again? word in the English language than That's flinch. The first one's a power warning. Slap. Okay. So Fields talked. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No doubt about it. So he talked about, you know, just be you have floppy. Time if you want to use it. Are be, you, good? you know, like water, You're as good. Bruce Lee would say. Yeah. Okay, recovered. He's flinching. Just close your eyes and Can't be, be too floppy. Can't be too floppy. Right there. Back straight. Okay. Just rub my wife's Stay right where you're at. That's perfect. <laughs> I knew okay. That was coming. <laughs> <laughs> right on three. Right on three. That's nice. your measure. Point deduction. Second shot for flinching. Here we go. Check that. No point. One. Two. Here we go. Flinch. Flinch again. Flinch again. Yep. I saw that one. I mean, Flinch. come on. The crowd called it out as well. That was. That's what you're doing, right? Okay. Oh, come okay, on. Okay. So, the whole philosophy you have a of, of you have a not tensing up is not really working again? Uh, okay. right now. I mean, it's good, on, it's good on you paper. Got 43 seconds if you want some time. Sounded great. Okay. Remember. Okay, that's fine. Three fouls okay. and it's over if he has one more flinch. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. 
At this point, just close your eyes. Jewel Scott is so happy. He just came over one talking point to red Dana flinching. White, who's grinning ear to ear. One point, one point red flinching. Well, that's brilliant. One point red flinching. Okay. Recovered. Recovered. Okay, recovered. So if a clean shot Stay is right landed there. here, this is a 10-7 round right no matter there, what because it's already been... And then count. Right on three. Right on three. We're in the first round. Maybe at this point, if you feel you might that as well just flinch because you've got no chance of winning. Well, then you punch. lose. If you flinch again, it's yeah, over. Yeah, One. Two. Oh! oh that, that, was that was the best one. He still flinching. moved a tiny bit. But that's it. It's that's done. It. It's over. It's over. Three flinching fouls in your DQ. Really surprised to see that from Andrew Fields, who is a veteran of two slap fights here. That's disappointing. It's very disappointing. You come all this way, you take a place on the card, you know, there's other people out there that want this opportunity. You're going to flinch three times in a row? Come on, man. Come on. At this point, after you flinch twice, just close your eyes. You don't even know it's coming then. Everybody has their own theories and their own philosophy on how they want to receive their slaps. It's the same way that guys have different wind-ups, different styles. And you got to feel good for Jewel Scott, however, after back-to-back -back losses to Jesus Gaspar Diaz and Robert Trujillo. He's off the schneid, and he now has a winning record. Three and two in power slap. Yeah, it's not bad. Three and two, back to winning ways. I mean, no, I kind of by default, by disqualification, but it doesn't matter. A win is a win, regardless of how it comes. Good sportsmanship by the guys hugging it out. And Jewel Scott will have his hand raised here momentarily. Andrew Field's going to be going back to the upstate in South Carolina. Disappointed in the outcome with some work to do. Jewel Scott, a professional fighter and personal trainer. About to find out the results here. Let's send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Chris Tyone calls a stop to the match in round number one, declaring the winner by disqualification. Jewel Kid Diamond oh, Sky! Where you at, 170? Hit this 170 brain. Ain't no cut with this boy. Ain't no cut with this boy. Yeah, he's been working on the mic as well. Let's take a look at some of the social stats for Power Slap. They're staggering. Over 2 billion video views on social media, 5.2 million followers on Power Slap on social combined. Jewel Scott, the man you just saw there, 352 million video views on TikTok for his KO of Anthony Green. The number one sports post, 13 overall from quarter one on the platform. Top Power Slap YouTube short. It exceeds baseball, the NHL, the NFL, and NBA shorts by four times. We also have over five million views on Rumble of Power Slap 1 and Power Slap 2. Our third match of the night is on deck, and few slappers have been busier than Azael Rodriguez, back for his sixth match here in Vegas. El Perro taking on Amir Nuruddin, who won the toss and will slap first. Aiming to make his mark as a champion in both power slap and boxing, Azael Rodriguez has the heavy hands to hit his goal, and he plans on laying those hands on Amir Nuruddin tonight. Rapidly closing in on a shot at the Power Slap middleweight title, San Diego's Azael Rodriguez has impressed in winning four of his five fights, most recently scoring a unanimous decision over Jesse Nutting earlier this year. But to make the kind of impact that gets him a crack at the crown, he's looking for a finish against Amir Nuruddin. Living up to his nickname, the Comeback Kid, Washington's Nuruddin bounced back from a loss to Vern Cathy with a first round knockout of Joe Landman that has him surging Power Slap's stacked middleweight division. Coming up next, Azael El Pedro Rodriguez meets Amir, the comeback kid, Nuruddin. A native of Deer Park, Washington, Amir, the comeback kid, Nuruddin, and it is a very fitting nickname. We remember him first for being on the wrong end of the greatest slap of all time. He came back and got a knockout of his own back in May of Joe Landman. You had to feel great for 
for the kid. A massive chip on his shoulder gets the redemption. Yeah, I mean, he's been at both ends of the spectrum. He's been knocked out in the first shot, and he's also knocked out his opponent in one shot as well. I mean, and that's kind of how important the, the, the flip of the, the coin is. You know what I mean? As you said, not too many of them resulted in knockouts. What's the percentage down? 20%. 20%. Feels like more to me. Feels like more. Well, it, it seems like more tonight, so certainly yeah. that percentage could be chasing, changing. It's definitely more with the heavier fighters, I believe, tonight. Yeah, Amir sure. Amir Nuruddin is a minus 140 favorite, and he actually says that he wants Vern Cathy again. That's the guy that uh, knocked him out. In yeah, that first well, he's fight. five and three in amateur mixed martial arts. You might want to get up against Vern Cathy, but tonight he's got Aziel Rodriguez. El Pedro, hailing from San Diego, California, currently living in Grenada. He moved there to be with his wife, who's in vet school. And he's actually been there most recently all by himself, doing nothing but training, because his wife's been back in San Diego. So he's been very, very focused. Some lifestyle changes for him as well, Charlie. Yeah, I, let's talk about Azael's evolution. You guys remember the guy he was in the house versus now? Crazy. It is the biggest transformation I think I've ever seen in my life. But listen, not to correct you, Dan, but he's not there all alone. He's with his dog and three cats. You are right. He's got Good some point. company. Uh, but like you said, this has allowed him to really just zero in on his training like he has never before. And he said for the past two events, he's really put more of an emphasis on his cardio and flexibility. But this time, he has gotten back to his power lifting roots. He says he feels five times stronger than he did when we last saw him. And now he believes his knockout power is off the charts and does not expect this to go past the first round versus Amir. You say three cats? Three cats, one dog. That kind of changes the way I feel about yeah, Isaiah, me too. to be honest with you. <laughs> Strikes me as a different type of guy. All right, let's take a look now at the tail of the tape for Amir Nuruddin and Azael Rodriguez. Azael, the older man, Nuruddin, the taller man with a two-inch reach advantage and a slight favorite is the native of Washington State. Power slap announcer, Justin Bernard, take it. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the power slap middleweight division. Introducing to you first, in the blue corner, he stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 184 and one half pounds. Out of Deer Park, Washington, he is the number four ranked middleweight contender in the world, Amir, the comeback kid, Nuridi. Let's go! And in the red corner, with a professional record of four wins, one loss, he stands five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in officially at 184 and one half pounds. Out of San Diego, California, he is the number two ranked middleweight contender in the world, Azael El Pedro Rodriguez. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Amir Nuruddin. All right, thank you, Sabrina and Olivia. Appreciate you guys being here inside a packed Apex tonight. Competitors, center up. Let's go, guys. Aziel Rodriguez, yeah, crazy so experience. Right he has five yeah, fights the on the resume, yeah, as opposed to just two for Nuruddin. Right. Right First right time we've seen three. the Jordans on stage. Right. He's wearing so the J's, is right Nuruddin. Right on three. But fortunately, so far, everybody's had shoes on. Remember, Darius the Destroyer came here twice in bare feet. That was a bad move, if you ask me, but never mind that. Here we go. One. Two. Oh. Ooh, that seemed oh. low to me. That was a powerful shot. I mean, as I have started to go down, Fair I kind of caught himself halfway yeah. down, saying a fair blow as well. Yeah, yeah. You got time. Healthy shot by yeah. Amir Nuruddin. 60 seconds to recover for Azael Rodriguez. Just keep yourself ready, I'll bring you back. See where this lands. So they can see where they're, what's going yeah, on in the future. Yeah, perfect. I don't know, it seemed a little high. You good, you got 32 seconds right now. 32 seconds. Let's see, look at this. 32 seconds, 29, 28. 
Yeah, clean blow. I stand corrected. Clean blow. Let's go, And a good blow. Good well, shot, as I Aziel started to go down, like the legs right kind of went limp for a second. Then the power came on. Right on two. Right on two. According to our PI data, this is the second fastest slapper on the card tonight. Aziel can rip it, and he does. He's okay. Those are two good ones. Two good ones, but I'll be honest. Woo. I give the round to Notre Dame. Do you really? Yeah, I think he had more impact. Got time. I think he There's almost dropped Rodriguez. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Look at the mean look on his face. Oh, oh, ho. They're both pretty they good. They're both pretty good. Let's listen to this one. Oh, oh God. You like that? When you're ready. My goodness. Good evening. The two dap it up, a lot of mutual respect there. The reason I give it to Notre Dame is because. Rodriguez nearly went down. You're right. I, uh, he caught it. kind of dropped, and he caught himself. And I think okay, that's where the experience came yeah, in for Azael. Yeah, yeah. Right on two. Right on two. Keep your feet flat in yeah. the box here. Right on two. Mouthpiece in. Right on two. One. Oh. It's weird because, again, it looks like he was about to go unconscious. But then he kind of catches himself. But then he smiles. He does this little dip. Yeah, he does. And it's like he wakes back up instantaneously. Maybe he's trying to like absorb some of the power. When you're ready, why don't you come over here and coach? Oh, I don't know. That doesn't look like he's playing the game. No. Look at the eyes. <laughs> wow. Flat like this. The recovery is amazing. It is. It is. He looks unconscious for a second. What hand and what count? Right on one. This right is this is an outstanding one. matchup between these two. In you the can box. see the reason the odds were relatively yeah. even. We've, We've had no okay. fouls. Right We've had good power. They both right received it. One. I'd say that one of them so far. One. Okay, changing it up. Oh! El Paro not playing. Four. Oh, I don't think he's going to get up. Five. He's done. Six. Seven. That, hold on. Eight. No way. That's it. No way. She's over. And he nearly went wow. off the end of the stage. So here, we're going to just hold on to you right here. Dude, I always so say don't go on one. one. He had you more know juice on one than he did on three. You know I'm coming back to that. Wow. Tonight's Monster Knockouts are brought to you by Monster Energy Unleash the Beast. I mean, this was a good one. Look at that, straight down. Let's go with the stick. Forrest catches him, closes the eyes. He knew it was oh coming. My Look at gosh. that. He melted his face. Yeah, the face is all contorted. My word. Brilliant. So, Nuradine said to Azael afterwards, I'm coming back for you. I tripped over my foot. Watch his left foot here. It kind of gets caught, but he was, he was done. He was gone. He was done. I mean, fair play to the man. Tried to get back to his feet, tried to continue, but when he did manage to stand... Let's take a look at some of these reactions. There's... Hold on, look at that. Brilliant. <laughs> this place is almost at capacity already as well. I'll tell you, it, it's awesome to watch on Rumble, but it's such a different feel when I'm, you're here I'm, live I'm, because the audio is so distinct and so loud. Every single time, the atmosphere in here has been unbelievable. People are having an incredible time. Let's send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jason Herzog calls a stop to the match in round number two, declaring the winner by TKO, Azael El Pedro Rodriguez. So El Perro improves to five and one and could very likely have earned himself a title shot tonight. Tonight's 10 count replay brought to you by 10X World. 10X your business, 10X your income, 10X your life. Go to 10xworld.com. Uh, four, five, he tried. six, seven, 
I thought for a minute he was up. Yeah, but look at that. He almost falls right there. off the cage. Sorry, off the stage, pardon me. Uh, again, that sound is just sickening. Azael Rodriguez is training to be a boxer and a champion here. Let's send it to Charlie Arnold with El Perro. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. Here with the winner, Azael Rodriguez. First thing, guys, he said to me when he walked in, told you I was going to be standing next to you after the fight. You predicted a first-round finish, but a second? Not too shabby, my friend. Yeah, um, I honestly was uh, undecisive whether I was going to go on two or number one. As you see, my number one is a pretty knocked out uh, type of slab. I should have gone on one. My, one of my, my coaches said, go on one on the first one. I should have listened to him, but uh, yeah, I still got the knockdown, so it was wonderful. Well, your slap looked incredible. I also want to touch on your recovery uh, because it looked like for a couple seconds on both of Amir's slaps that you kind of went into like a mode where you were a bit wobbly, but you recover so fast. Is, is there a technique that you have going on there? Um, I just, um, I got knocked out once already. So I was reviewing that footage and it was just a matter of me um, trying to keep my neck hard during that slap, keep, uh, clench, uh, clench my teeth. So I think it helped out to just clench and keep my neck hard. It did daze me for a bit, but just having my neck uh, uh, as stiff as possible just helped me just recover as fast as possible. Well, you now move to five and one in power slap. And it looks like if, if everything goes your way, there could be a championship opportunity in the near future. You agree with that? Who would you want? I want the championship uh, rematch against uh, John Davis for sure. Um, they did put me at rank number two for some reason after beating Jesse. I just had to come out here and perform again, and hopefully I'm at rank number one and get that rematch against John. That's the only person that I want right now. Okay, well, you looked amazing. Congratulations, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Charlie. Guys, back to you. And ironically, the champion, John Davis, one of the coaches, so he is here tonight. Azael Rodriguez has grown up a whole heck of a lot since living in the slap mansion on power slap road to a title and now improves to five and one. Three fights in the books for more on our featured prelim. Let's send it back to Charlie. Yeah, power slap OG Emmanuel Mooney's entering with momentum, looking to build on his three and two record and establish himself as a welterweight title contender. His training consisted of mostly rotational workouts and was supplemented with technical advice from Darius the Destroyer. His goal tonight, keep his feet planted and get an early knockout, as Muniz says the flashier the better to get him to a title shot. And he will take on Cole Young, who says he feels like he's the strongest he has ever been, saying he is throwing a, quote, Mike Tyson type of punch now, after training three times harder since May when he earned a draw. Power Slap's resident taxidermist also says he's been staying busy lately, going rattlesnake hunting, a bare-handed mission that always results in him eating his prey. The same thing he says he plans to do tonight to Maniz. Static is in the building. Light heavyweight champ AJ Hintz has arrived. Hintz has already defended his title once. 
but this time he's hoping it looks a little different. Back in May, his opponent was DQ'd for a stepping foul, so hits left with the belt, but this time around, he's extra motivated to leave, no doubt. And he will need to do it against this man. Wolverine, not one to take lightly, the former heavyweight champion, has moved down to a more natural weight class, and he plans on putting that Arkansas country strength to work in the main event. Up next, we have a couple of welterweights. These welterweight striker rankings brought to you by Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Can't wait to see Christopher Thomas, the champ, get back out there again. Waylon Frost, the number one contender. Emmanuel Muniz and Cole Young, we will see them tonight. Andrew Provost and Anthony Blackburn round out your top five. We do have number two and number four on deck. The winner could be looking at a title shot in the near future. And it's a pick 'em as even as it gets. One of Power Slap's most active competitors, Emmanuel Muniz, makes his sixth appearance tonight, and he expects to make it his most spectacular one yet when he meets Cole Cole San Young. Aiming to win titles in Power Slap and the UFC, 23-year-old Emmanuel Muniz has the ambition of youth and the poise of a veteran as he's won three bouts against Mike Webster, Wesley Drain, and Christopher Debo on slap fighting's biggest stage. To accomplish the first half of his goal, Muniz needs to keep winning here in Vegas, and that's the plan when he meets Cole Young. Unbeaten in power slap with a knockout of Jay Rivera and a draw with Anthony Blackburn, the bow hunter from New York is aiming for an upset against Muniz tonight. Coming up next, Emmanuel No Love Moonies battles Cole Full Send Young. These fighter walkouts brought to you by 10X World, 10X Your Business, 10X Your Income, 10X Your Life. Go to 10xworld.com. Big time outdoorsman is Cole Full Send Young from upstate New York, Cornell, New York to be exact. I learned something from Charlie. I didn't know he was a rattlesnake hunter and he was huh. eating his prey. Yeah, well, that just sounds disgusting, if I'm honest. But still, this guy, Cole Young, getting better and better all the time. He said he loves the opportunities that Power Slap has given him. He said, I'm making a lot of money financially. This is making a huge difference for me, of course. He wants to spend as much time as possible with his son. He said he's been working so hard, training with his coach, Hoss Coates. Uh, he said that he's a genius in striking. He's working out with him about four times a week. He said, the power that I'm generating now compared to when I first started. He said, it's day and night. And now I'm also, I'm not fouling, I'm not stepping. I'm being sure to follow the rules, improve my technique, generate more power, and providing better income for his family. I just noticed he's not wearing shoes. I wish he would have asked yeah, oh, us about that. I don't like that at all. You got, you just don't have as much traction. When you have a tread, when you have a shoe, regardless what kind of shoe, you got more traction, you got more grip. You're going to generate more power. Well, we will see if he bucks the trend here tonight. The former all-conference linebacker in high school in Southern California, Emmanuel No Love Muniz, 23 years old. One of the youngest and most experienced competitors in Power Slap. Last four matches have gone to a decision, so there is no doubt this young man has a chin. Yeah, absolutely. Never been knocked out either. I mean, as you said, all decisions. Former footballer, as you said, he's big for the weight class. Used to be a middleweight, dropped down to 170. Very experienced. He's made some mistakes along the way. We will have learned from them, but he's taking this more and more seriously all the time. When we spoke to him the other day, he said he's putting a lot of effort into his strength training core training, doing a lot of squats, a lot of deadlifts, all the usual stuff that you would expect. Working on explosivity, needs to be sure to follow the rules as well though. Also working on a food truck, making burgers when he's not here, taking part in Power Slap. Take a look now at the tail of the tape. Cole Young and Emmanuel Muniz. Young is three years older, one inch shorter, and it is Muniz with the one inch reach advantage. This is even as it gets. It's a pick em. Let's send it to our Power Slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the Power Slap welterweight division. Introducing to you first, 
in the blue corner. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 and one half pounds. Out of Hornell, New York, he is the number four ranked welterweight contender in the world. Cole Bullshit Young. And in the red corner, he stands six feet tall, weighing in at 171 pounds. Out of Ontario, California, he is the number two ranked welterweight contender in the world. Emmanuel No Love Muniz. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Chris Tyone. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Cole Young. I'm going to go back to this no shoe issue. We'll get to that in just a minute. Power Slap 3, Hints versus Wolverine, presented by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast. Sorry, Michael, go ahead. No, 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 not at all. Um, I think it's Never a mistake. Go, I'll just say it. I think it's a big mistake because look at professional boxing. They wear boxing Thank shoes you. because you have better dra track shoes. You don't wear them in mixed martial arts because of all the grappling, and of course you can grab it, grab the foot, right. heel hooks, etc. Okay, don't move. Okay. But compared to right striking, right on three, three you must measure. Shoe okay. on, there's a massive difference. That's your measure. I'll count for you. We'll find out here. It seems like it's going to be hard to keep the feet grounded. Hey, well, it well, does that as well. Now, we might generate a lot of power, it might get a knockout, but I'm willing to bet One. it would be higher. Two. With shoes on. We've oh. seen him hit harder. He was. He, that's not foul. the best slap that we've clubbing. seen from Cole Young, and, and he gets a clubbing foul. Ah, poor guy. One point okay, blue okay. clubbing. One point blue clubbing. Put the shoes One on. One point blue clubbing. Can you put shoes on between rounds? I'm sure you can do it. Yeah, yeah absolutely you can. I want to shout out. Put the shoes on. Cool. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, fighter recovered. Yeah, that was low, okay. for sure. In just a second. There it is yeah, right see, there. Yeah, got it's good. grazed the neck right as well. Swiped right across the neck. Got it. Hand and count. I think it makes right it more difficult right to on receive three, you must the measure. slaps right as well. Right on three, with you shoes. must measure. That's your measure. Muniz has power. We saw it in his last one. Look at that. Two. It's a good rotation. I tell you what, Cole is tough, though, man, because that was a good slap. It generated a lot of power. Okay. Colin took that like it was like it flinching. flinching. That's a warning. Ooh. You flinched. It wasn't a terrible flinch, but he rolled yes, with a little early. Okay. That's not going his way. You have a choice. Well, lucky to get off with a warning, but he's going to have to take another one. Watch this. I'll take another hit. Okay. Uh, yeah. It was really slight, but it was the okay. proper Don't. call. There's slight, you're tucking but it's your there. As well. Okay. I got you. I got you. All the way up to the podium. There you go, right there. Stay straight so here. the penalty there, for move, flinching, okay? the striker yeah, gets to go right again, regardless okay? of whether a point right has been deducted right or not. Three. That's you punishment in itself. Okay? That is your measure. One, two. Ooh. All right, so that's a clean strike. We could be Good. looking at okay. a 10-8 round. Oh, he's punishing okay. himself. Oh, push-ups. Push -ups. Well, he's trying to psych himself back up, trying yeah, to wake the body up, get ready to deliver yep. a potentially a knockout blow. You've got 40 blow. seconds. You've got 40 seconds. Come on, bud. He looks good, though. He looks fine. He's not wobbled. Okay, no, he's, right he's definitely he's fine. Right he's still in the game. Okay? Yeah. Actually, you can relax yeah, until I right. get him in. Okay? You good? Yeah. So, okay, fighter recovered. Emmanuel Muniz okay. has no, five pro again. slap fights. That is as many as anybody in power Ooh, slap, and he has count. never count. been knocked and out and before. Right on three, you must measure. measure. Cole Young trying to become the first right here. Let's see what he does in the second. One. Two. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh, foul. solid blow. Oh, a foul again. Foul. Another foul. I think he caught him in the eye. You could see Muniz grabbing yeah, the eye right after he received the strike. One point blue clubbing. One point. One point blue clubbing. Fouls point blue are clubbing. killers in this sport. Remember, it was a foul in his last match that caused Cole the victory. He was a draw with Anthony Blackburn. 
I couldn't see from that angle. Yeah, yeah, that was a tough one, but you could see he caught him in the eye. Well, you saw straight away, as you mentioned, he grabbed the eye. It, it certainly wasn't egregious. I think his finger might have just gone up a little bit. I know he got up in your eye because he was too high. I know he doesn't Sean think Sean Strickland right certainly knows what that feels is. like, doesn't he? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Got early last weekend. What are you guys up there talking about? We're in Syria, bro. What do you think we're talking about? John Davis got, got coaching up Moody's right yep. middleweight yeah. champ. And so far, it doesn't really need any coaching. Things are going well. Here. Well, no, at Emmanuel, this juncture, I got, wet, I got a wet rag. Cole I'm just gonna wipe is going to need a knockout to win this fight after two fouls. Well, it looks like it. Well, no, that's the fact. Like one second. 50 seconds. Second. Unless now Moody's commits yeah, a foul. That shit sucks. That shit's going to be all swollen. I know. You'll be all right, though. You're good. You're almost there. Thank you, sir. You just, you have to have oh, about clean shots right here now. if you're Emmanuel Muniz. If I'm in his corner and I'm coaching him, I'm, that's all I'm saying. Feet planted, no clubbing, land clean. Come on. This match is yours. Over. Yeah, okay, focus on delivering a fair blow. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't tuck your chin. Just okay. landed clean. Stay set. Could be, could be game set. And for the love of right. God, Cole, right on three. do not you must flinch. Measure. That's your measure. It looks good. Another it's good close. one. It's looks close. fair. Cole did a nice job on that. Close. What am I doing? Chris Tanyoni said it was close. Well, I, I did think it's I good. saw him move. It's just the so slightest. Slightly. It's, ah. Uh, I mean. It is close. Go ahead and relax. He's being very picky. Yes, three. You think Tanyoni's being picky? You've I mean, got, he's, you've got 40 seconds. You know, okay, so you give a little bit of leeway. Yeah. Take your time, man. I think you that's fair, Michael. We, we give a little leeway with, with the heel lift, right? You can have a slight yeah, heel lift. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Shit's stupid, bro. Look at the redness, though. Okay, recovered. Fighter recovered. Okay. Is that in here? This is his last shot for Cole Young. I mean, Muniz right needs to be right seeing right stars right after this right strike in order for Cole Young to win. That's your Muniz needs a knockout. Sorry, uh, uh, Young needs a knockout. And if you look at the two of them, the side of the face of Young is red roll. Muniz. I don't know. I think you might be able to call Muniz for flinching there. He didn't like that one. He got him in the eye one. again. No. I'm just saying his eyes hurt, that's all. You have you have 45 seconds, okay? Just so you know, you have 45 seconds. You can talk to him if you want. Yeah, he, it, something's happening where good. Cole's I mean, as good as you're gonna in, be at the index moment. finger's coming up and fucking marks I know, scraping I know. him in the eye, but I, it looked like a clean just strike your, to me. You're 30 seconds right now. I can't hit him hard enough. Can't see because no, of Cole's head. Clean. 25 seconds. Clean. Yeah. Right. Get up there and hit no, clean, no, land no, clean. No. That was fine. That didn't touch the eye. Fighter recovered. You know, you generate a lot of power. It doesn't have to be the eye. You could have a broken orbital, for example. You could have a fracture. It just doesn't know what it feels like. Oh, you got your head? Oh, here you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, I'm getting hit there again. There, go. there you go. My bad. My bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm getting hit again. Okay. Stay right there. Okay? Right on three. Again. Right on three. Just, cl just land it clean. That's your measure. I mean, you could touch him with a feather and you win this thing. Did he flinch? I think he flinched more Good. this time than he did the last time. But it was that half not a flinch. Matter. Yeah, I think it was half a flinch. Half a flinch. Yeah, maybe a quarter flinch. Oh. That's it. That's it. All right, Emmanuel All right. Muniz helped out by the fouls, landed some clean strikes. Cole Young, again, done it. The, the fouls are absolute killers. If I'm training for this sport, I'm so focusing uh, solely on that filing and then worrying about the power. It's easy to say that because the power is a big thing. The power puts people to sleep. The power generated wins fights. But of course, the fouls cause you to lose, you know? So it, it's a fine line. You want to generate as much power as possible whilst remaining in control. Too much control minimizes the power. Too much power minimizes the obedience. This sport is so young, still in its infancy. Cole Young at Power Slap 2 looked to be a win away from fighting for the title. He fought to a draw with Anthony Blackburn. He's gonna lose here tonight and gonna fall down the rankings, gonna have to climb all the way back up. 
And then you have Emmanuel Muniz, who's going to improve to four and two. And, and it's a real shame as well, because go. Cole Young, when you talk to the guy, a real nice man, hardworking family man, strong values, loves his hunting, just a real outdoorsy type, just a solid human being. But that doesn't matter right now, because sadly, he's about to be declared the loser. Senate to power slap announcer Justin Bernard to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score the contest 29-26 for the winner by unanimous decision, Emmanuel Nola Muniz. So Emmanuel Muniz now four and two after winning by unanimous decision and each and every one of his last three wins have been by decision. So he earns them all because he has to eat his fair share of slaps along the way. Four and two so far as well in power slap, building that experience. Here's round one. Nice shot. Cole Young's not gonna like seeing that back. A little yeah. bit of a flinch here, is it? Let's take a look. See, if anything, Muniz is, is kind of striking his eye. Knocks the earbud out there. And now, Emmanuel Muniz, big winner with Charlie Arnold. That's right, guys, here with the winner, um, winner Emmanuel Muniz, now four and two in power slap, a real veteran. I mean, six six fights is not too shabby. How did you feel about this one? Uh, it wasn't the cleanest one uh, for myself. You know, I got... I've been trying to put through these as many fights as I've been putting through the, this whole year. Uh, wasn't my best one. I felt I could have got more power out of it. Um, the shots, I mean, they were easy. I took the shots. Uh, like I said before, none of these guys at 170 can hit hard enough. They were a little high. It's messing up my eye, but it's all good. We're just going to continue trucking on, move on to the next one. Yeah, I wanted to ask about your eye. I know you were getting hit semi-awkwardly. We wasn't really sure what was occurring. Are you okay? Yeah, it's just a little... It's a little blurry right now. I'll be okay in a few days, but they were just a little high on the eye, on the placement, but it's all good. I mean, like I said, I, I can eat them all. All these guys at 170, they don't they don't hit hard enough. Yeah, still standing here like a champ, and, you know, speaking of the champ, you know, this was a opportunity for you to potentially put yourself in position to be a contender in the welterweight division. You feel like you did enough here to prove that you deserve to be there? I mean, yeah, definitely. There's no there's no other contenders in, in the welterweight division. I know Chris, he keeps he, he's scared to say my name. He doesn't say my name everywhere. But, you know, Chris knows what's coming for him. He's been knocking out all these scrubs, but he ain't never knocked out someone like me. He's never going to knock out someone like me. So, I mean, hopefully we see him next. We see that contract next. So, hopefully. Well, congrats to you. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, back to you. All right, Charlie, thank you very much. Emmanuel Muniz working his way on up. If you enjoyed the first four, you're going to love the next four. It's heating up at International Fight Week in Las Vegas. Where else would you rather be? Right here, right now. The main card on Rumble starts in 60 seconds. Let's go.